Hi, my name is Edward Capozzi, and I'm the chair of the Brock Eichler Personal Injury Department in Roseland, New Jersey. When I was asked to sponsor the KJS ice hockey team, I said, what a great fit, because not only am I from an ice hockey family, but I'm also living in Kinalong. My son plays goalie for Jefferson Middle School, and I've lived in Sparta. So I'm very familiar with the community and many of the people who are involved in the youth hockey sports. So if you're injured in an auto accident, an elevator crash, a trucking accident, a slip and fall, please give me a call, and I will take very good care of you. George. J. Keller and Sons want your house to be the kind of home for all to see. Best roofing, windows, siding too. Great solar and gutters, we're here for you. Our season pros are unsurpassed, so give a call, we'll take your task. Transform your home, that's what we do. So give a call, we're here for you. For roofing, siding, windows and solar, we do it all for you. George J. Keller and Sons. Your family owned operation since 1980. Call for your free estimate. I enjoy helping nonprofits achieve their goals and really accomplish their mission, namely by nurturing my relationship with them, their staff, their donors. But then reality sets in and your stiff back, achy knees, and painful shoulders remind you that it's been years or even decades since you can move that way. Don't worry, the team at Better With Physical Therapies one-on-one customized care can help you feel and move better again. Their specialists will find the cause of what's slowing you down and build a plan that will help you realize that your glory days are still ahead of you. You can get better with Better With Physical Therapy located in the Madison YMCA. Request an appointment today at betterwithpt.com. Starting us off at number five, here is Mendham's Liam Lloyd with the snipe past Morristown goalie Dylan Peck for his 10th goal of the year. Daniel Leonard with great defense is still the puck goal. We reset and TJ Santeda has it for the Vikings. Santeda brings it right past two defenders. Look at the speed in the open ice. Santeda, great stick handling, great shot. Here's Carlotti. Oh! In the end zone it is. Caught! Charge. Good for the pass. Here's a shot. Right in front. Score! And that is a base hit. The run will score. And freshman pull a check. Gets the strike. Anthony Grosso is going to make sure that the Wolfpack fans go home happy. Grosso for three. He got it! Ah! And welcome to Henry Borsch Memorial Gym here on the campus of Newton High School as Morris Susk Sports presents High School Boys Basketball. It's a Freedom Division battle between the Newton Braves who come in at a record of 4-10, and 2-6 in the Freedom, under their first-year head coach and former Brave All-Star Paul Filan as they take on the Lenape Valley Patriots, who come in a record of 8-6, 5-3 in the Freedom Division under their veteran head coach Dan Moylan. Good evening, everyone. I'm Dan Cleary. This is a big battle always when Lenape and Newton play each other, but a special night could happen tonight. As we have the starting lineups, you see Troy Brennan coming out. He is nine points away to become just the third player in Lenape Valley history, boys basketball, to get 1,000 points. And a lot of storylines going on here tonight, folks. Troy's dad, Pat Brennan, mom, Carissa, proud Newton graduates, played sports here. Pat was a longtime soccer coach here, won a state title. 2012 was a great uh, lacrosse coach at Sparta. And just the whole Brennan clan when it comes to sports royalty at Newton High School, you don't get any further than the Brennans. His aunts, Katie and Bridget, scored 1,000 points here at Newton. His uncles, Kieran and Brian, were great players here, played at FDU. There's just so many different interchangeable stories. He scored his first point in his high school career here at Newton High School. Now he can get his 1,000 point. So we want to thank Lenape Valley Athletics for sponsoring this game which could be special with all the Brennans and the Hecklins in the house. It's an extended family and could be a very special night for Troy Brennan. So we'll give you the starting lineup for Lenny Valley. Number four, Nate Sarnella, six points a game. Number 12, Anthony Cali, 12 points a game. He hits about 33 pointers. We're going to listen to the national anthem, folks, and we'll be back with the breakdown of the game.
All right, national anthem in the books here as we were talking about Troy Brennan. These two teams met earlier in the year with Lenby Valley with a 50-46 win. Uh, the story of Lenby Valley, obviously Troy going for 1,000 tonight, but it's such a well-balanced team. We'll give you the rest of that starting lineup. Anthony Cowley with 33-pointers. J.J. Worthington, four points a game, but a tremendous athlete, number 30. Troy Brennan, 34, 13.7 points per game, three and a half rebounds and an assist a game. And then the big guy, six foot six, number 44, gave quarantine nine and a half points a game, four and a half rebounds. They'll be in the visiting red. They beat Newton the last time they played at Lenby Valley, 50-46. Quantry had 10 and 12. Sarnella had 12. Troy Brennan had nine and 10. And Anthony Cowley had 11. For Newton, in the home white, they're led by the man's be taking the opening tip, Jake Bennett's back from last year's team. 17 points a game, six and a half rebounds, 1.6 steals. He can also shoot threes. Also starting tonight, number 20, Fabian Speck. Three points a game, 2.5 rebounds. The Dominic Latruglio, he scores about four points a game, two boards, 2.5 assists. And an up-and-coming sophomore, Maxwell Meslowski. His dad, Jason, was a terrific athlete here at Newton. Jason, excuse me, Max, eight points a game, two and a half rebounds, 17-3. Good over, Sarnello spots up for three. Can't get a go, Bennett's with the rebound. Troy Brennan needs seven for a thousand. Just become the third, joining Joe McDonald, graduating in 82, and Sean Benz, who graduated in 1998. Bennett's for three, and he's all net. Five two lead for the Braves. Again, pressure defense by Newton. I got to see Joe McDonald play when I was in high school and covered Sean Benz, so this is pretty cool. I have an opportunity to possibly see the third Leonard B. Valley player. Bennett skips it over. Ball fake. Baseline drive. Lane in. Can't get the go. And a rebound by Troy Brennan. Strong move by Latruglio. Just unable to finish. Pin move and he traveled. A lot of Newton luminaries out here tonight. So County Hall of Famer Billy Siska. He's going to join us in a little bit. The, the, the Brennan family, their relations with everyone goes all over. And again, royalty when it comes to athletics here at Newton High School. Left alone, we'll swing it over. Patience on this set by the Braves. Baby Inspect got the foul line, see if they try to get it to him to break down the zone. But Ball for loose. And Latrugio with the offensive board can't get the go. And it's off the Braves. Newton ball with 2.49 to go here in the first quarter. Worthington brings it up. Newton with the 5-2 lead. And it'll be Newton ball. Turnover. Crowd starting to fill in here at Newton, the Ryerson Rowdies. Pressure defense here from the Braves, excuse me, from the Patriots. Newton's able to break it. Bennett swings it back out. The true goal. And he double dribbled. It'll be Newton, uh, excuse me, Lenby's ball with 2.18 to go. Troy's uncle Brian, great coach at. Sparty just got his 300th career win. Congratulations to Brian. Galley swings it back. Troy Brennan left alone for three. Can't get it to go. Bennett's pull-up jumper, good. Seven-two lead. Bennett's with five of the seven points. Sarnella left alone for three, can't get it to go. Bennett's gets the board. McCullough puts on the brakes. 
Good look inside. Good defense by the Patriots. Lozowski pulls up his dribble, sends it back out. McCullough will reset. Petruglio left alone, pull up jumper. Good. 9-2 lead for the Braves. Sarnella brings it up. Stay here with Lenape. Callie gets a handle on it. Brennan, he draws the foul on the floor. Be the first foul on the Braves. Picking up the foul will be number 25, Dominic Petruglio. Checking in for Lenape Valley, Liam Kelly, number 40. And also coming in for Newton. Well, actually staying out there is Cooper Armstrong. No, Cooper Armstrong coming in. Kozlowski will head to the bench. Troy Brennan will inbound right in front of us. Quarantine was left alone, but he's fouled on the floor. He's got good size. It'll be tough to handle. Second foul on the Patriots. Both teams with two team fouls. Armstrong from Newton picks up the foul. On the inbounds, Cali. Little runner gets it to go. Needed basket there for the Patriots. They trail 9-4. Under a minute to go here in the first quarter. Here live on the Morris Sussex Sports Network, I'm Dan Cleary. Again, I want to thank Lenby Valley Athletics and Athletic Director Rob Klein for sponsoring tonight's game. Inside to Bennett. Gives it up to Trugo, bounce inside. Turnover, Troy Brennan comes out with it. And coming back with the steal is Latruglio. 22 seconds to go. Thirteen seconds. New will probably hold for one. Latrugo inside. Bennett dumps it to the corner. McCullough looking inside for Speck. Oh, great look to Latrugo. Tough shot in the paint. He gets it to go with two seconds to go. So one quarter in the books here at Newton High School. Freedom Division battle. And Newton off to a terrific 11-4 start. As we'll head to break between the first and second quarters. We'll be back with second quarter action. Live here on the Morris Sussex Sports Network, right after this. Montella Inc. is a family-owned dumpster rental business located in Stanhope, New Jersey that's been around since 1984. We provide prompt, quality service at a reasonable price for our New Jersey customers, whom we consider our family. We don't just take out the trash. Montella Inc. is a full-service waste management company servicing demolition sites, construction projects, factory sites, shopping centers, commercial businesses, and homeowners. Call today at 978 weekly at one of Brooklyn's oldest pasta houses and coordinate daily deliveries of the best fresh meat and produce from the Hunts Point Market in the Bronx. And welcome back to Newton High School. Right in front of us, Troy Brennan. Seven points away from reaching the magical thousand points. But I'm sure him and his teammates would like to get back into this one. That's the farthest thing from his mind. If he's a Brennan, he's just worried about winning and losing. The numbers will come. Terrific team mentality by the Brennans as players and as coaches. Oh, he's all alone, he gets it. He's got four. The true girl, he's got six. Bennett's with five. Bennett's looking to make it eight. Can't get the go. Good offer with the rebound by Armstrong, and then Bennett's with the finish. Looking to answer with a three, no good. Brennan with the rebound, and he draws the foul. That should be on Cooper Armstrong. Brennan's got four, he needs five to get to the magical 1,000 point plateau for his career. As we said, he scored his first points here as a player, as a freshman. Liam Kelly checks back in, number 40. Quarantine will head out. Fouls on Latrugo, though, his second. Braves third. And he's got five, four away from 1,000. Pressure defense again by the Patriots. Break it easily by the Braves. But they'll turn that over. 
I've been lucky to have a working relationship and friendship with the Brennan family for a long time. So just kind of neat to see this. And you're not going to find a better and classier family than the Brennans. McCullough with the steal. Gets trapped, looking to give it up. Bennett's is there. Can't get it to go. Rebound by McCullough. And slapped away will stay here. Sarnella will check back in number four for Lenape Valley. I covered most of the Brennans when they were high school players, and in fact, all of them, and then as coaches as well. On the inbounds, Bennett's can't get it to go. Brennan with the rebound. So kind of neat to, for me tonight to have the possibility of calling Troy's 1,000 points. Good ball movement, left alone for three, and a big three right there. Knocking it down is Liam Kelly. 13-10. Bennett rips it inside. Don from Denzi is checked in. Don got injured during football. Good to see him back. He's wearing the goggles and mask, or just the goggles. He injured his eye during football season for Coach Matt Parzero. A motion offense here by the Patriots. Sarnella back over. Kelly inside to Brennan. Powers up, and he draws the foul. His uncle's Brian and Kieran played at FDU. Aunt Bridget at William Patterson, part of the Hall of Fame there. Aunt Katie was at Lemoyne. He hits that free throw. Got six. Make it seven. But more importantly, cuts it to one. Worthington going for the steal, the overplay. He draws the foul. And that'd be a third foul on Lenby Valley, second on JJ. Hill heads to the bench. Checking back in, Anthony Cali, number 12. Rays will get it in. This is McCullough. Inside to Bennett. Draws the double. Actually, a triple. Good steal. Kelly comes out with it. Rays will bring it up. Brennan gives it up. Sarnella. Gives it back. Kelly with the move, and it'll be called for the charge. Great job by Ferdenzi to take the charge for the Newton Braves. Two-two-one full court pressure defense by Lenby Valley. McCullough swings it over. Good anticipation there. Braden Coles, who's checked in number 24. This Lenby Valley team very athletic and deep. Right in their top player numbers wise, but at any given night, one of these guys can help Lenape Valley win. As we said, they're sitting at eight and six, five and three in the division. Last year they went 15 and three, 15 in uh, 11, nine and three in the Colonial, bumped up to the Freedom along with a pack on who won the division. Bennett's with the take and the foul. No, he's called on him, offensive. Paul Filan disagrees. Paul was an outstanding athlete here. New great basketball player for Dirk Kelly. Checking back in. Fabian Specht. Christian Grauer will check in number 10 for Lenape Valley. All right, Brennan just two points away. Taps away. 
And if he gets it on this possession, I think he would be rem remember it more so that he gave his team the lead. He's a total team player. Swing it over to Sarnella. Cali will launch a three, can't get the go. Battle for the rebound comes back out to him. Gets tied up, sends it back to Sarnell. Let's see if Lenby Valley resets, they will. A little ball fake, Cali gets the defense in the air. Sarnella inside, Brennan gets it! 1,000 points for Troy Brennan for his career. Congratulations to Troy as he becomes just the third Lenby Valley player to reach 1,000 points. Joe McDonald in 1982, Sean Benz in 1989, 98 I should say, and now you can put Troy Brennan in the record books as he's calling out his parents. I'll have a little presentation. Dad, Pat, Mom, Carissa. Brother Tyler is on the team. Grandfather Tom, his wife Pam, grandmother Helen, her husband Rich. And maternal grandparents, Jeff and Debbie, they'll be going out there as well. So congratulations to Troy Brennan as he gets a standing ovation. Rob Klein out there taking pictures for Lenape Valley. Here's Pat Brennan, Mom Carissa. He is a four-year starter, two-year captain, received all NJAC honors his first three years, member of the National Honor Society, and he would be playing lacrosse at Muhlenberg with his cousin, Caden Jones, from Kittatinny. His dad, Pat Brennan, is going to take a shot. Let's see. Pat played here. Oh, what a nice moment here at noon. He scored his first point. And 999 points later, he gets 1,000. Congratulations, Troy Brennan. And a great job. Look at Paul Filan. What a class act from Newton. Everyone at New here at Newton, hats off to them. This is a home game for them. And they have rolled out the red carpet. Great job. Paul Filan joking with the officials. Come on, let's get the game going. A uh, tremendous moment. Congratulations, Troy. And again, like I said, more important to him, it gives them a lead, 14-13. Officials tonight, Jim Trusha and Tony Inari. All right, now we're back to who's going to win this game. Lenby Valley has a bye in the HWS. Good ball movement here. Mislowski from the corner. Can't get it to go. Rebound pulled down by Speck. Bennett's catching a break right here, a breather. Speck inside, short. Rebound pulled down by Kelly. Lenby Valley got the eight seed. Look at the winner of North Hunter and Opacon on Tuesday. And attacking the basket, nicely done there, is Anthony Kelly. 16-13, we'll have a whistle. Newton will have a rematch with High Point in a 14-15 game being played here on Saturday at noon. They beat High Point 58-51 in the regular season. Bennett's at 23-9, Speck 13-6. High Point was led by Max Miller with 16 and Aiden Mitchell with 16. So each team with five fouls apiece. That foul was on number 40, Liam Kelly. So Lenby Valley with a bye in the HWS. And their next game will be an HWS game against the winner of that Opaca on North Hunterdon game, 20 verse nine. They will host that game on Tuesday. Baseline, give it up inside. Put back off the, and we'll have a foul on the floor, no shot. Foul will be on Specs, his first, team sixth. 
Oh, what a nice moment for Troy Brennan and his family. Dirk Kelly in the house. I just saw, I think that's Dirk over there. Not used to not seeing him in the new bench. His color, and he's called for the charge. What a job Dirk Kelly did over the years here at Newton. That 2017 team finally got the monkey off his back, winning that section title after being there six times. What a team. Jason Heater went on to play at St. Michael's. Charlie Maker, Louis B. Arias, Arias Jackie Young, Kate Tarabaki had the big shot against Westwood to send overtime. They dump it inside, and Mazowski gets it to go. Thomas Salmon, an unsung hero on that team. Jaden Elliott, Colin Kelly, another kid, great minutes. Great look, Brennan inside, he gets an assist. Basket there for Kelly. 18-15 our score. Foul there. And that'll be the sixth foul on Lenovo Valley. That will be on Anthony Cali. Actually, no, they're gonna call that on. Uh, this was on Newton, excuse me. So that's their eighth foul, so one and one. Vitruvio picks up his third. So one and one for Anthony Cali. Rattles it in. Largest lead of the game, four points for Lenape Valley. Newton had 11-4 lead at the end of the first quarter. Quarantine has checked in, number 44, rattles both. 15, at 20 to 15, our score. Have a foul on Lenovo Valley, and that will be on Christian Grauer. Sixth foul on the floor against Lenovo Valley off the inbounds. Armstrong left alone, takes the three, can't get the go. Good box out by Speck, allowing Mislowski to get it. McCullough with the pull-up jumper, no good. Grauer with the rebound. Pressure there by Newton. Braves will get back on defense. Kelly. Back out to Cali. I see for Denzi with those glasses. It reminds me of Thomas Salmon. Hard nosed kid on that 2017 Newton Club. Little runner in the lane, and it goes for Cali. And Lenny Valley starting to extend its lead, and Paul Fallon's going to call a timeout. 22 15, our score with 1.37 to go here in the first half. Thanks for joining us live on the Morris Sons of Sports Network. I'm Dan Cleary, and we just saw Troy Brennan get his 1,000 point. A replay there, a little runner in the lane getting to go, Anthony Cali. So we want to thank Lenby Valley Athletics, Athletic Director Rob Klein, for sponsoring today's game. And again, big shout out to everyone at Newton for being the class acts that they are, rolling out the red carpet for Troy Brennan to get his thousand point and to make it a memorable night. Again, I've well documented the, what the Brennan family has meant to Newton High School. What? What? Along with the Heckmans as well. Helen Heckman, longtime educator here, and Rich Heckman, longtime coach and teacher at Sparta, but on the board of Ed here, very active in town. Two great families. So the timeout called. The lead is extended to seven for Lenape Valley. Talking to Coach Filan, he goes, if we win our game Saturday against High Point, they go to Hunter and Central on Tuesday and then Sparta on Thursday. That's quite a week.
get into Maslowski. Inside, Speck will draw the foul. That'll be on Grauer. His second. Team seventh, but it was a shooting foul, so Speck will shoot two with 1.23 to go. Can't get the go, rebound comes down, and it will be off Newton. Let him be able to get it, Brennan will inbound. <laughs> Tipped. Good hands there, Brennan with the hustle. In the new silence, Samir Wheeler was a terrific player here for Dirk Kelly. Good to see him coming back coaching. Samir, great kid. Pete Namowitz on that staff and Kenny Teets. McCullough looks inside. Bennett's still on the bench. McCullough for three, can't get the go, rebound. Coming out of that was for Denzi. Baseline jumper, no good, tapped out. Callie will chase it down. 40 seconds to go here in the first half. Six point lead for the Patriots. Looking to make it nine with Kelly with the three. No good, and it'll be a foul on the rebound on quarantine. A good box up by Specht. And it will be a one and one. Take a walk down the court, 30 seconds to go. Worthington and Sarnella will check back in for Lenape Valley next opportunity. Newton with nine team fouls, Lenape Valley with eight. Matt Williams will check in. For Newton, number 42. Quarantine, it's first foul. And the front end pops in. Good job by Armstrong to get that to fall. Use a little body English. Looking to close the gap to four. Can't get the go, rebound pulled down by Brennan. It remain 22-17. See if Lenape Valley holds for one. like they will. Troy Brennan got his thousand point. Seven seconds. See if they get into it here. Sarnella swings it out. J.J. Worthing left alone for three. Can't get the go. Gets his own miss. Good if it goes. And no good. So one half in the books here. And Lenny Valley with a 22-17 lead over Newton. But the big story, Troy Brennan gets his thousand point become just the third player in Lenape Valley boys basketball history to reach that milestone. All right, folks, we're going to have the halftime. We'll be back with third quarter action here live on the Morris Sussex Sports Network. Hi, my name is Edward Capozzi, and I'm the chair of the Brock Eichler Personal Injury Department in Roseland, New Jersey. When I was asked to sponsor the KJS ice hockey team, I said, what a great fit, because not only am I from an ice hockey family, but I'm also live in Kinelon. My son plays goalie for Jefferson Middle School, and I've lived in Sparta. So I'm very familiar with the community and many of the people who are involved in the youth hockey sports. So if you're injured in an auto accident, an elevator crash, a trucking accident, a slip and fall, please give me a call, and I will take very good care of you. George. J. Keller and Sons want your house to be the kind of home for all to see. Best roofing, windows, siding too. Great solar and gutters, we're here for you. Our season pros are unsurpassed, so give a call, we'll take your task. Transform your home, that's what we do. So give a call, we're here for you. 
For roofing, siding, windows and solar, we do it all for you. George J. Keller and Son. Your family-owned operation since 1980. Call for your free estimate. I enjoy helping nonprofits achieve their goals and really accomplish their mission, namely by nurturing my relationship with them, their staff, their donors, their volunteers, and their board members. I think the key to being trusted is really transparency. What I've seen time and time again is that when you give anything the right conditions, the support, the autonomy, trust, your full attention, it will thrive. This is as true for my clients and for my colleagues as it is for myself here at WIS. Do your glory days as a high school athlete feel far behind you? Are memories of being out there competing so clear that you can feel it? But then reality sets in and your stiff back, achy knees, and painful shoulders remind you that it's been years or even decades since you can move that way. Don't worry, the team at Better With Physical Therapy's one-on-one -on -one customized care can help you feel and move better again. Their specialists will find the cause of what's slowing you down and build a plan that will help you realize that your glory days are still ahead of you. you can get better with Better With Physical Therapy located in the Madison YMCA. Request an appointment today at betterwithpt.com. Starting us off at number five, here is Mendham's Liam Lloyd with the snipe past Morristown goalie Dylan Peck for his 10th goal of the year. Daniel Leonard with great defense to steal the puck back, moving behind a goal to pass it back into the middle to Ryan Leonard with a first time shot to make it 3-1 for Bernard's first whippity. Coming in at number three is Par Regional's Dylan Zelinskis on a great individual effort, creating a breakaway opportunity for the goal as Par Regional breaks through for their first win of the season. First Town with the pressure on all of the Mendham players to give Harry Stetton an incredible breakaway to fake out the goal, letting them know who the boss is to score the fourth goal for Morristown. Finally at number one, it's Pope John star Alana Robinson with the crossover against Sparta's Bryn McCurry and finishes with a smooth jumper. Let's take a look at that again, but in slow motion. Top five plays of the week feature top plays and athletes, as well as upcoming previews of the teams you want to watch out for that weekend. Check us out on Thursdays at 6 p.m. right here on Morris Sussex Sports. If you live in Andover, Blairstown, Byram, Frankfurt, Franklin, Frieden, Freelingheisen, Green, Hampton, Hardwick, Hope, Knowlton, Lafayette, Newton, Sparta, Stillwater, Sussex, and Wantage. Planet Networks is building high-speed fiber in your neighborhood. Visit GetPlanetFiber.com today to learn more. At Planet Networks, our high-speed fiber is designed to be fast. Up to 300 times faster than cable and up to 500 times faster than DSL. As fast as 10,000 megabits per second up and down, if you speak nerd. We're talking cheetah, bullet train, lightning strike, hummingbird, race car kind of fast. Planet Networks. So fast, it's worth the wait. WIS gives me the freedom to be entrepreneurial, innovative. I feel supported to bring 100% of myself and my personality to work each and every day. I'm the CEO of WIS Family Office. I have two amazing children. I'm the daughter of French and Italian immigrants. Above all, I'm someone who derives strength and confidence from my ability to connect with others, and I strive to make a difference in their lives. George J. Keller and Sons want your house. Your attention, please. We interrupt this commercial with a special report from George J. Keller & Sons. Summer is over and school is back in session. Now is the time to get your home ready for old man winter. Call today to get back to school savings for home improvements with no interest and no payments for 18 months. New clients get 5% off their price. Call George J. Keller & Sons to find out more. Hey, don't you just love it when more Sussex Sports broadcast your game? Or do you prefer a silent motion detecting camera just following the movement on the court? Let's face it, the only real way to watch your favorite team is through Morris Sussex Sports award-winning service that brings you play-by-play -play commentary, live instant replays, cool cinematic graphics, real-time scoreboard, fun fan engagement, and much, much more. 
Plus, all of our broadcasts are free to watch. Grandparents can easily pull it up on their smart TVs, and alumni can watch from all over the world. So if you want to reserve us, have your games broadcasted the Morris Sussex Sports way, then just reach out to me, George Muha, at george at morrisessexsports.com, or call or text me at 973-713-5944. Chairman's Elite Club Loan Officer Mitch Vandalinda of Loan Depot is your go-to person for home loans, whether it's a new home mortgage or a refinance of your current home, and she specializes in renovations for those who want to add on and fix up. Because of her extensive knowledge of loan programs, problem-solving skills, and steadfast commitment to customer service, Midge ensures that each borrower receives superior guidance as they pursue one of the most personal investments of their lifetime. Reach out to her today at 973-202-0992 or mvandalinda at loandepot.com. Jen Basilino of the Kosher Real Estate Group, LLC, is a Morris County top real estate agent and New Jersey Circle of Excellence award winner year over year that takes the time and care to understand your real estate needs and concerns. She's extremely successful in representing clients in selling and purchasing a home, new construction, townhouses, million-dollar homes, rentals, and even commercial properties. Call her today at 973-202-2103. For all of the perks that come with working here, I would say that the most valuable thing WIS offers is freedom. The freedom to make the most of your role, to really go beyond the job description, the freedom to think differently and be rewarded for it, and the freedom to show up as 100% who you are. I actually used to be deathly afraid of public speaking. I intentionally became an adjunct professor teaching tax, and I also became a Zumba instructor as a way of overcoming this fear of mine. They're both forms of leading and teaching in their own right. Bottom line though, WIS supports my passions. I truly believe that WIS wants me to be the best version of myself, and it's such an amazing feeling that I truly have the freedom to do that here. Stop by Anthony Franco's of Sparta and Roxbury after the game where we believe that quality and satisfaction go hand in hand. We take great care to author authentic New York style pizza as well as many classic and modern Italian dishes without compromising on cost or relying on ingredients that are frozen or preserved. Our ingredients come from Wisconsin's finest dairies. We order pasta made weekly at one of Brooklyn's oldest pasta houses and coordinate daily deliveries of the best fresh meat and produce from the Hunts Point Market in the Bronx. Maximum Health Physical Therapy in Bud Lake and Long Valley focuses on putting patient care back into health care and physical therapy. And welcome back to Henry Boris Memorial Gym here at the campus of Newton High School. Live on the Morris Sussex Sports Network, I'm Dan Cleary. And Lenby Valley with a 22-17 lead over Newton, but the story, Troy Brennan becoming the third player in Lenby Valley boys basketball history to get 1,000 points in pro history boys and girls. He also joins Lisa Fiorello, who scored 1,000 in 1982. Lindsay Sabo in 2013, Marissa Quaglia in 2013. Both of those players were on a team that went to a section final for Cap Boger. Terrific coach and was a great player to pack on. And the most recent one, Grace Connery. So we're underway. 
Joining me, a special guest here in the third quarter, Sussex County Hall of Famer, an outstanding overall athlete and guy from Newton High School, our man, Billy Siska, inside basket there from Lenneby. Billy, thanks for joining us, buddy. Yeah, appreciate you having me on. It was lucky uh, somebody somebody didn't show up tonight, so a slot opened up for me. <laughs> Happy to be here. Nah, you're always on the first team, Billy. Hey, <laughs> you've been parts of big games, 1,000 points and all that, and you know the Brennan family extremely well. What, what were your thoughts on what we saw in the first half? Just super happy for Troy. You know, I've been following his athletic career for many years now, and, uh, you know, the kid is just another chop off the old Brennan block there. He looks exactly like a Brennan. Yep. He, it, well, perfect cross between a Brennan and, and a Heller. Yep. Mom, mom and dad, two amazing athletes, so not surprised at all Troy's ripping it up here. Kozlowski with the three. His dad was a former Newton star. 24-20, our score. And just talk about the Brennan family, what, it, what, what they mean to Newton. Although Troy's at Lenape Valley, but they all went here. They were all outstanding athletes. And you can attest to it with the Siska and the Duffy family here at Newton. Just the family atmosphere Newton has put together over the years. It's really awesome to see that, you know, 20 plus years later, that not much has changed. A, a <laughs> lot of things have upgraded. A lot right. of the same families are still still kicking around here, but finally got a great football program here, thanks to Parzero and company. And, uh, you know, wrestling team's still killing it. Soccer team's great. Field hockey team's great. Basketball teams are great. Um, it's 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 just such a, a special thing here. A lot of a lot of these towns have kind of modernized, and you see a lot of new names and new faces, and come back to good old Newton Green and Andover, and it's a lot of the same people. And it's, I don't think it's by mistake. It's because the area and the people that are here. Well, the oldest high school in the area by far. Back in the day, was Newton High School, Franklin High School, Sussex High School, and Hamburg High School. When we walked in tonight, uh, Troy's dad, Pat, told a great story of a, a picture that surfaced a couple of months ago of Pat and my cousin Jimmy Duffy, and I was probably seven or eight years old behind the bench there as the towel boy, and uh, it's nice, you know, the whole Brennan crew is sitting to the left of us here now sharing this great memory. Super proud of Troy, and I'm sure it's something these guys will, and, and gals will remember for the rest of their lives. Quarantine, the big guy sticks the put back, push the lead back to six. Dirk Kelly in the house now. He can't get rid of basketball. He's coaching at Centenary now. <laughs> he's, he's not going to ever stop. It's just going to be a matter of what level of involvement. And, and obviously, he, he groomed Paul for many years. And a, a lot of the things I hear Paul yelling on the sidelines are things I remember Dirk yelling 25 years ago. Well, you had some good teams you were on. Who were some of the guys you played with, Billy? Well, coming up as a youngster, freshman, sophomore year, it was, uh, it was Hoffman. It was Herzenberg. It was Kieran Brennan. It was Kurt Heller, Jimmy Memory. Uh, Danny Butzikaris, uh, and then, you know, senior year, it was myself, Pequiba, Freddie Mall came out and played basketball for senior year when we went on that run to win the county yes, finals indeed. in uh, in 2000. That was a magical year for you guys. Football, first time in states in over 15 years, probably 2000, and then, about oh, 10 years, I think. I think the older Pequiba and those guys made it in like 90 or something like that, but yep. you guys had quite a run. Yeah, it was a special year. And like you said, we finally put together put it together for football and basketball was just another 23 24 game win season which was pretty regular at that point in time and uh you know baseball team won the county made it to the state finals it was uh couldn't have written the story any better trying to dump it inside Wellington kicks it out they get it to troy brennan A little baseline j nice touch he's, he's got it now he's settling in at this point he leads everyone with 11 tonight. And he's doing it up and down the court too. He's guarding that inbound. They've been pressing most of the, most of the whole night and uh, he can do it all. He can dribble, he can rebound, he can shoot, he can pass, play defense. And his game's lacrosse. Exactly, this isn't <laughs> even his number one. The big guy with another putback. He's got a quick four here in the second half. Lead up to 10, 30 to 20. And the cool thing, we talk about family, he's gonna be playing with his cousin. Caden Jones, mom Bridget, and dad Darrell, the athletic director at Walk Hill. And he's going to be playing college lacrosse with his cousin at Muhlenberg. Another family tie there. His yep. uh, Caden's dad, Darrell, was my QB coach here freshman year, sophomore year, before he went over to Hakong uh, prior to, you know, getting out at Walk Hill and doing great things over there. So it's, uh, it's just such, like you said earlier, Dan, special thing out here in Sussex County. Most of these towns and teams don't have the 
the, the kind of camaraderie we do over decades of time. Bennett's back in. Foul was on quantry, quarantine. He has got two. Each team with a foul here in the third quarter. The Inkler joined by Sussex County Hall of Famer, Billy Siska. Bennett's is a kid that I remember seeing watching a couple Christmas tournament games here a few weeks back. He's a kid that if I think he, he commits to his game a little more and shoots a little more, the kid can shoot from the outside. He can, he's not all that different than Brennan. He, he can really do it all. I've seen him uh, in spurts really be a special player here. Was last year for three. He kind of reminds me of one of the kids that played after you, Aiden Black. Mm-hmm. Thousand point scorer. Yep. Similar body type. Well, the foul on the floor. What are your thoughts of the kid from Lenape, the big kid corn quarantine, 44. He's got six here in the third quarter. Yeah. Using that big body. Another big boy. They really, you know, I think Bennett's can can close to match up on size on Brennan, but they don't have anybody else that can can really come close to that size on 44. Newton's got a, a little bit of a speed lineup out there most times. 10 point game, Lenape Valley with the lead. Nice take, can't get the go. And he's just been dominating here in the third quarter. Yep. He's got about five offensive rebounds, he's got six points. Ferdenji trying to box him out there is uh, it's a mistouch. That's a, that's a tough, tough ask right there for Ferdenzi. But Ferdenzi's a tough, tough kid. Got hurt during football with the eye injury. Yeah, he's not gonna back down. He's, no. gonna, he's gonna be throwing it, throwing it around down there, but there's, I'd say, 60, 80 pounds of difference between those two men. Second foul on him, third on the Braves. Hit the free throw. He's got seven here in the third quarter. Newton needs to go on a little bit of a run here. Next two or three minutes will be critical here to set themselves up for the fourth quarter. Bennett's with the board. 33-22 our score. Philly in the Suss County Hall of Fame, along with his sister Liz, who's an amazing athlete here at Newton High School, field hockey, basketball, and in my opinion, one of the best softball players this county's ever seen. Been living in her shadow since birth. <laughs> Nothing's changed. Oh, great nice look. look. Great look. The old quarterback number three, Robert McCullough. Nice little dish right there to Bennett. They need to get a stop and, a, and another basket right here, and just as I call for it. You got it. Nice look oh, again great by look McCullough. From McCullough inside to Meslowski. A nice little run that you asked for. Billy, you're getting it. It's 33-26. The Rowdies are a little right, light over here to the right of me, so I think that's some and some of the, the Rowdies have passed. We're gonna take a look at that, Billy. Watch this. Turnover. McCullough. And oh, there you go. So beautiful. Cut to the basket. Maslowski's going to be a great player, too. The kid's only a sophomore, young. I was in high school with his dad, Jay, for a couple of years. Great pitcher on the baseball yes. team. Legacy, and, uh, another legacy coming through. Yep, exactly. Hey, we want to thank Lenape Valley Athletics for sponsoring tonight's game. Bob Klein does a great job, the athletic director over there. Got two athletic directors talking shop over there, Ryan Hashway and Daryl Jones. That Lenape crowd really showed up tonight. I knew the Brennans would all be here, but I think the whole rest of the town came in support of Troy, which is a great thing. Absolutely. Great to see this Lenape-Newton rivalry is still uh, alive and well. In every sport. Billy, I was telling people the story on the air. Joe McDonald, the first 1,000-point scorer in 1982 for Lenape Valley, went on to play at Maine, and he played Division I football and basketball at Maine. That's something you don't see too often. Very impressive. I played football against him, and he was just a monster. Well, the second 1,000-point scorer on your list here, Sean, Sean Benz. Benz, was a great player. I played against him one year, and then his little brother Kyle was my great, another another terrific player. I don't think he quite hit 1,000, but that kid could play. They'll bring it over to Sarnell at 33-26, our score. And to the big guys, had a very good third quarter. Troy Brennan puts it on the deck, swings it out. Worlington, baseline jumper. Yeah, get the go. Newton's going to try to continue this run. Outlet, Mislowski to McCullough. He draws the foul. Great take by McCullough right there. He's hot right now. A couple of dishes, few assists. Hopefully he'll convert this, this three-point play right here. 
Bring it within four. Well, a lot of Valley fans are probably not fond of Mr. McCullough. A couple years ago when he was a sophomore, he kicked that field goal to beat the Patriots in the final seconds as he hits the free throw. Ice cold when he's kicking. And I hear rumors he's playing lacrosse next year, but I hope he, he walks on somewhere and tries to kick, because I think he can walk on to any school in the country. I agree with you on that. Trapped by the Braves. And you can see the intensity from Newton has stepped it up, uh, uh, Billy. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, Coach Filan has these guys coached really well. I came up to a couple practices in December, and you know, he, he runs practices the same way Kelly used to, and these guys play with the same kind of passion. It's uh, not quite as loud over on the bench as it was with Dirk there, but Paul's teaching the same kind of stuff, and these guys, uh, you know, really bought into it, and they, they play really hard. It's a, it's a Newton trait in most of us. Great take there by Callie. Him and Brendan leading the scoring for Lenby Valley tonight. Good thought there, we'll stay here. Liam Kelly will check back in number 40 for the Patriots. Yeah, Kelly's a good little player too. He can shoot from the outside, he can handle it. McCullough on the inbound, gets it in before the five count to Latruglio. Good ball movement, McCullough in the corner. He's hot Counts now, down. he's hot now. Three point game, at one point it was 12 point lead for Lenape Valley. Newton has come back and they've cut it to three with just under two to go here in the third quarter. Couple of hoops, two turnovers, right back in this thing. Brendan and Bennett, that's a good matchup. We'll have a foul on the floor. With a fourth foul on Newton. It's either two or three on Bennett's, I want to say. That's yeah, he had three. to sit in the, in, the, in the second quarter. Yep. And that's when Lenby Valley was able to answer that lead. He's going to stay in right now with three. Got to be smart. Yeah, I assume Coach Filan trusts him to not have any crazy Ooh, fouls. Here. It was got number four that. there, but he did great really job. Close. Got the call. Affected the shot for Denzi with the drive. He'll get two here. He'll get two here. I was saying on the air before Billy that 2017 team that Dirk won the section title. You, you followed those guys, right? Great. Charlie team. Maker and Heater in them. Yep. When I see for Denzi wearing them goggles, he reminds me of Thomas Salmon. <laughs> <laughs> that kid dove for every loose ball. He did all the dirty work. Yeah, that uh, that was a special team too. I remember watching some of their games on uh, online, and it was uh, it was a really special team. They had a bunch of good players. They're really well coached, and it was a, a special season. Fouls on Kelly, his second team's third. For Denzi will hit the first. Back to a two-point game. He can make it a one-point game. Free throw so key late in these games. Can't make it. The full, Kelly with the rebound. 1.30 to go third quarter, Brennan will bring it up. And I don't think we've seen him get in the game tonight, but Brennan's little brother, Tyler, Tyler gets, gets time on this team too as a freshman. Another, another great athlete coming up uh, from that Brennan clan. Good job by Callie, gets the runner, he can't get it to go, and it will be Newton Ball. They have a chance to tie or take the lead with 104 to go. It was 32-22 at one point in this quarter. I'm trying to either keep it with McCullough here, he's got a hot hand, or, or maybe get Bennett's an open look. Lenape continuing to press here. Both teams have a, for most of this game. Great job, Petruglio patient, can't get it to go. Bennett's just missed time to tip. 49 seconds to go. It was a good look right there too. Just gotta try to use the glass. I think Lenape's content to get the last shot here. 34 seconds. Worthington. Oh, that's offensive, no? Mm, they're looking, nah. the officials are saying on the floor, looking at each other. Blocking for Zanzi. Close, close call right there. Second on, third on Dom. Fifth on the Braves. Fabian Speck will check back in, number 20. Fabian had a good football year. You know, when you got Braden Nolan and Taylor Sibley's ripping it up at linebacker, he did a great job. 
kid's an absolute stud on most teams in this county. Right, we should play with siblings and no one. Slipped through the cracks uh, on this team, but yeah, I mean, Fabian had a great year and was a very, very important part of that team's success. Worthington, he's a terrific athlete, plays football as well. Swings it over, so Nellif, 15 seconds. See if they get into it now with seven. Oh, a turnover. Newton has a chance here. The Trugula tracks it down, but Worthington's there. Two seconds. Good if it goes. And just why? So a good third quarter for the Newton Braves. They scratch their way back into this one as they trail Lenape Valley 35-33. And we'll be back with fourth quarter action live here on the Morris Sussex Sports Network right after this. At Planet Networks, our high-speed fiber is designed to be fast. Up to 300 times faster than cable and up to 500 times faster than DSL. As fast as 10,000 megabits per second up and down if you speak nerd. We're talking cheetah, bullet train, lightning strike, hummingbird, race car kind of fast. Planet Networks, so fast it's worth the wait. WIS gives me the freedom to be entrepreneurial, innovative. I feel supported to bring 100% of myself and my personality to work each and every day. I'm the CEO of WIS Family Office. I have two amazing children. I'm the daughter of French and Italian immigrants. Above all, I'm someone who derives strength and confidence from my ability to connect with others, and I strive to make a difference in their lives. Do your glory days as a high school athlete feel far behind you? Are memories of being out there competing so clear that you can feel it? But then reality sets in and your stiff back, achy knees, and painful shoulders remind you that it's been years or even decades since you can move that way. Don't worry, the team at Better With Physical Therapy's one-on-one -on -one customized care can help you feel and move better again. Their specialists will find the cause of what's slowing And we're back here at Henry Borsch Memorial Gym here in Newton. Live on the Morris Sunset Sports. I want to thank Billy Siskin for joining us for the third quarter. Always great to see Willie. Folks, if you didn't get to see him play in high school, he was a special three-sport athlete. Football quarterback, basketball forward, terrific baseball player. There's a steal. And Maslowski will lay it in, and Newton ties it up at 35. Newton was down 10 midway through the third quarter and has come back with a great run. Looking to answer, can't get the go. Rebound pulled down by Speck. The Truga on the run out almost went in. That would have been something. It's a 13 3 run. Bridging the third and fourth quarters for Newton to come back and get this game tied. But that's no surprise. First time they played was a four point game, a win 50 46 for Lenape Valley. Newton's four and 10, but their team you don't want to play here in the second half of the season. They're just going to get better and better. Quarantine gets his own miss, powers up, can't get the go. Good defense by the Braves. Bennett brings it up, playing with three. Latruglio, patient. Over to McCullough. McCullough hits some big baskets. Get them back in this. Lozowski with the entry, good ball movement. Latruglio, corner three from McCullough, short. Quarantine with the rebound. Here comes Callie. He's not afraid of big shots. If he's left alone, he will take it. They swing it over. Sarnella, switch, they send it back out. Newton playing man, they open the game in his own. That's gonna be foul number four on Latruglio. Armstrong will come in for him. Five fouls on the Braves, three on the Patriots. Yeah. 
Troy Brennan. Get it back to Sarnella. Worthington. Very patient in this set. Troy Brennan, Bennett's on him. Off the screen, Callie swings it over to Sarnella. Inside, strong in the basket for quarantine. He's had a good second half. Levy Valley will retake the lead, 37-35. Just over five to go. Bennett's great look inside, Maslowski with the cut, and he finished. He's got a quick four. We're tied at 37. Brendan left alone for three, knocks it down. Three-point lead for Lenneby after Brendan hits the three. Oh, McCullough is making the cut. Not on the same page. Good thought, though. Brendan brings it up. Pressure defense again by the Braves. Lenneby Valley's able to break it. Worthington puts it on the deck, gives it up inside, and travel. Bring it up, trail by three. McCullough. Armstrong, Sarnella on him, tight defense by the Liberty Valley Patriots. Newton's done a nice job with backdoor cuts here in the second half to create easy baskets. As they spread it out, gotta watch that cutter go into the hoop. Long three, short. Speck with the rebound, great job, great give and block. Wow, Quarantine sends it back. Maslowski with the Euro still can't get to go. Speck with the rebound. Fast and furious, and is it a walk? Yes, it is. Holy smokes, what a, what a sequence there. With no points. <laughs> the big man says, get it out of here. Send it back. The old time fans, John Thompson of Georgetown, used to tell Patrick Ewing, send it back. And Dan Boylan's going to call a timeout to calm things down. Did it take a 30? At this time, we'd like to thank Levy Valley Athletics, Athletic Director Rob Klein, for sponsoring tonight's game. We really appreciate that. Let me take a look at the uh, Newton huddle. Hey, folks, if you want to get your game on the air, you can check in the bio here on the YouTube page. There's a form you can fill out. Or you can send an email to george at morrisussexsports.com. If you want to advertise, send an email to george at morrisussexsports.com. Four million unique views on our social media. There's no other platform that gives you that kind of exposure. Plus, we have our digital playing cards. So we got it all covered at Morris Sussex Sports, folks. So you can check that stuff out on our website, on our social media, and on the YouTube page. You can fill out that form to request the game. So 3.29 to go. Let it be with the 40-37 lead, thanks to Troy Brennan's three. Troy got his 1,000 point in the first half. Joining Joe McDonald and Sean Benz, as well as Lisa Fiorello, Lindsay Sabo, Marissa Quagley, and Grace Comer. Sabo and Quagley on that team that went to the section final, lost to Glen Rock back in 2013. Cap Boger was the coach then. Cap was a thousand point scorer at Opacon. I think she was Cat McPhail. Worthington. Back out to Brennan. Let it be Valley will be patient. Even though it's a three point lead, they will not force it. That's a well coached Dan Moylan team.
Last year, Dan coached before he came back. He had a team that beat a favored Wallkill team in the first round of states and gave Quantic all they wanted. On the road, the Quantic got Jordan Tobacman who went to play baseball at North Carolina. So very patient here. So Nello swings it out. Callie has the green light. Back to Callie, give it up inside, he walked. Let's go. Let's go. Took a lot of time off the clock on that possession. Newton can tie it up with a three. They'll roll it in. Again, they've done a good job spreading the floor and creating the backdoor cut. Bennis left alone, looking to tie it. He does! Jake Bennis with the three. Two fifteen to go. Brennan splits the double. Callie gives it up to Brennan. Back to Callie. Step back, takes the three, and he answers. Two less than two minutes to go. Worthington picks up the defense of the Truegill, playing with four. Mislowski. Back out, Bennis left alone, he'll take it again, and knock it down! Newton takes the lead! Jake Bennett's playing big. Actually ties it to the 43-40, 43-43. Brennan, they're matching threes? No! Rebound McCullough. Robert McCullough will bring it up. 120 to go, we're tied at 43. We knew this would be a good one, and they have not disappointed tonight. Again, working th those backdoor cuts. Speck back out top to Bennett's. Bennett's and Brennan going at it. This is Mislowski back over to Speck. He thought about it. We're tied. 43, 54 seconds. There's the backdoor cut, and it works. Bennett's with the basket. Now Newton takes the lead. 45, 43. And Dan Moylan trying to get a timeout. And he does with 41 seconds to go. Great look and a great finish by Jake Bennett, who's turned it on here in the fourth quarter. Let's take a look at that. Fabian Speck waiting. Swings it over. McCullough, great look inside. That's the old quarterback in him. Great floor vision, here's a look at the huddle. So, five team fouls on Newton, three on Lenneby Valley. Petruca, though, the only one with four, he's got four fouls. Again, Lenneby Valley, is off until Tuesday. They'll play the winner of the pack on in Hunter and Central. Uh, excuse me, North Hunter. North Hunter in favor in that game. Kyle Rerig has been a great coach at North Hunter for a long time. James Del Santo, Jack Clancy Malou, nice players for the Lions. So they'll play on Tuesday at home at Lenape Valley. And Newton, though, host High Point a rematch of an earlier game that they beat. High point 58-51, 14-15 game. The winner will get number 300 Central on Tuesday. Max Miller, Aiden Mitchell, the Franco kid, all do a nice job, Junta, for Jesse Strell in the High Point Wildcats. All right, this one, <clears throat> Lenny Valley down by two. They've had as high as a 10-point lead in this one. Worthington can't get the go. Brennan with the putback. We're tied at 45 with 30 seconds to go. Brennan and Bennett's putting their teams on their respective backs. Petruga over to McCullough, 19 seconds. Specs. Wait, oh, the steal by Corgi. We're going to have a timeout. Wow. Paul Filing got a timeout before the steal. 
full timeout. Wow. Court team thought he had a steal. Possibly. But Paul Filan saw it was getting a little helter skelter. He calls the timeout. Great job by Paul. Making his own former coach, Dirk Kelly, happy. He's across the gym from us right now. Again, weird not seeing him in that Newton huddle as he's coaching over at Centenary. Over 300 wins at Newton. What a stellar career. But this one, 45-45. Boy, Filan just beat that steal with the call, with the timeout. I said Paul was an assistant to Dirk, played for Dirk Kelly. Dan Moylan's been around twice here at Lenaby Valley. He was an assistant to Pope John to Tom Fox. Two good coaches going at it. Finally, first year head coach, but he knows his baskets. He's been around this new program since he was a kid. All right, 13 seconds to go. McCullough's not going to shy away from the moment. I can tell you that. Bennett's won't either. So you got Embezlowski too. You got guys on the floor for Newton are not going to shrink in the moment. Will they succeed and execute? Inbound to Mislowski. Over to Bennett. Inside. Oh! And we'll stay here. They're going to stay that went off Brennan. Newton will get it back with 10 seconds to go. Wow. Dan Moylan will call a timeout. 30 second timeout goal by Moylan. So Newton almost threw it away. Went off the hands of Lenny Valley. And they have a chance to inbound and possibly win this game with 10 seconds to go. It's been a great game. Memorable night either way for Troy Brennan getting that thousand point. Again, want to thank Lenby Valley Athletics for sponsoring tonight's game. And if you want to be part of the action, you're a more social sports, you want your game, you want to advertise, want to get a digital play card, send an email to georgiamorrisonsports.com. All right, Latrugula will inbound. Sarnello will be on the ball. Ten seconds to go. They get it to McCullough. Eight seconds. And he is fouled, but there's foul on the floor. That's a great job by Lenby Valley. Smart coach by Moylan. It's not a one and one and if you, they don't call the foul, you might get a steal. So that'd be the fourth foul, third on Kelly. So they can give up a couple. They can give up a couple, Lenby Valley, so they can be aggressive here with seven seconds to go. McCullough gets it in, Specked with the one move, and it goes, or he called the walk. The walk is called. Wow, Lenby Valley will get it back with five seconds to go. Oh my goodness. Travel is the call. Lenny Valley's got it with five seconds left. Brennan will inbound. Timeout call by Lenny Valley. They beat the five count. Wow. Travel was the call before the ball was shot. Newton fans don't agree. Here we go. Specs, he kind of moved his foot. And Lenny Valley will get it back with five seconds to go. Now, Newton has five team fouls. It looks like the five and the six here are kind of tough to di differentiate. It is a five, so they could be aggressive on the inbound and not have to worry about a one and one. So we'll see what Coach Finland comes up with. Lenby Valley, see they try to get the big man in the middle to break the pressure. Callie won't be afraid to shoot. Brendan won't be afraid to shoot. And neither will Liam Kelly. So you got kids on both sides of the floor that will not shrink in the moment. A 
All right, five seconds to go, actually technically 5.5. Sarnello will inbound. Brennan and Worthington, they'll put no one on the ball. Latruglio will play free safety. They get it into Worthington. He gets across, J.J. Worthington throws it up, off, and we're going to overtime. Here at Henry Borsch Memorial Gymnasium. Four quarters, not enough. As we will head to OT, tied at 45. We'll take a break, we'll be right back. Live in the Morris Sussex Sports Network. will help you realize that your glory days are still Sussex Meat Packing in Wharton, New Jersey is a family owned and operated business specializing in USDA prime and choice meats, pork, poultry, lamb, veal, and many other store made specialty items. They also have a fantastic deli, a wonderful market with all the freshest fruits, veggies, and pre made meals, and they can cater any event, including your family holiday dinners, more delicious than you can on your own. Visit them at sussexmeat.com. Hi. And welcome back to Henry Borsch Memorial Gym. You don't know who he is, folks. He's the godfather of wrestling in the state of New Jersey, high school wrestling. Coached here for many, many years. But we're going overtime in this basketball game, four minutes on the clock. It's tied at 45. What a flurry. We had a travel, and then we had a basket, a shot at the buzzer that just missed. We've had it all in this one. Four quarters, not enough to decide. That's on the ref, we're gonna do that again. So four minutes, tied at 45, a great comeback by Newton. They were down by 10. And that will be over and back. They're gonna say Lenneby had possession before Brendan got to it. So the first possession of the overtime will go to the Braves. Petruglio playing with four. Again, they've been working that offense and finding that backdoor cut. Spreading things out. Let it be in that man. Speck swings over to McCullough. Worthington fighting through screens. Running that motion. Work it down so you can get that open cut to the basket. Or if someone's left alone, they can take a three. Speck thought about it. He will take it. And he knocks it down. Maybe in Speck with a huge three. Newton up by three, 48-45. Worthington with the take. Bennett's with the defense. And it falls. Wow. Still a one-point lead for the Braves, under three minutes to go. 48-47. Good job by McCulley to keep that alive, getting it back to Lutruglio. Spreading the floor. Mazlowski skips it over to McCullough. Job here, patience by the Braves. 2.14 to go. Now Lenneby out, comes out and plays the ball. Speck just had a huge three. Mislowski for three, can't get the go. Cali with the rebound. One point game. Lenneby Valley trails by one, had a double digit lead. Cali swings it over to Worthington. Brennan with Bennett's on him. Quarantine. Shaping up down low. And we'll have a foul on the floor on Speck. That'd be sixth foul on him. I'm on the team, excuse me. 
And it actually will be one and one. That is the seventh foul. So that was a six on the board. Pick up the foul. I believe that was Speck. They have number 40 up there, but there's not a 40 out there for Newton. So I think they mean Speck. That's his third. Front end of the one and one. He rolls it in. Quarantine. Nicely done. Now the scoreboard's out. All right, there we go, 48-48. Lindsey Valley can take the lead if he knocks down both ends. He does. Big guys had a good second half, 49-48. Lindsey Valley with the pressure defense again. Bennett's weights, gets it to McCullough. Bennett's thought about it, puts it on the deck. Back out to McCullough. Get off the screen. Worthington fights through it. Again, backdoor cuts are coming. Bennett decides he's going to take it himself. Can't get the go. Rebound and a hell, hell ball. It will be Newton's ball. They get the arrow with 1.22 to go. Paul Filan's going to call the timeout here in overtime. 30 second timeout. Again, I want to thank Lenby Valley Athletics for sponsoring tonight's game. Thank Rob Klein. A 30 second timeout here in overtime. Lenby with the 49 48 lead. Quarantine with the big free throws. He's had a big second half of physical presence on the boards. Hey folks, after the game, check out later on tonight, more Sussex Sports social media, you'll we'll see our post game. Brought to you by Climate Care. I want to thank them. All right, 122 to go. Newton down by one with the ball. Each team had chances in the final 10 seconds of regulation. Just couldn't come through. And on the inbounds, McCullough would chase it down. Swing it over to McCullough. Brennan and Bennett's going at it. That's been a lot of fun tonight. Bennett's off the screen. Brennan gets there. Good job in the motion offense set and screened by the Braves. Turnover. Quarantine gets it. And they'll get it into Cali's hands. Here comes the pressure to look to trap. Sarnella puts it on the floor, and he is fouled. So good job by Nate Sarnella to read the situation. Once he put it on the floor, he knew he was going to attack the basket. Fourth foul on Specht, eighth on the team. So Sarnella with two big, with a couple of big free throws coming up here. See if he can extend the lead to three. 47 ticks to go. He hits the first. Two point lead. Timeout call by Finley. It will be a full timeout. Take a look at the huddle, Dan Moylan. He hits this, be a three-point lead. Newton doesn't exactly have to take a three. They can attack the basket. And maybe draw a foul to get a traditional three-point play. We'll see how the Braves approach this. We'll see what kind of defense Coach Moylan comes out. Will he continue to pressure defense, which he has done all game? Will he switch a defense up, come out of that man against that motion offense? A lot of options for both coaches here is where the chess game begins. Well, it begins at the beginning of the game. But it really becomes highlighted here. The two evenly matched teams going at it. Let it be one 50-46 the first time they played. All right. 
already. So now they're looking to hit his second free throw to make this a three point game with 47 seconds to go. This is two point game. The true deal, being smart, playing with those four. Gets the screen from Speck, so Arnella gets through it. Speck with another screen. Oh, look at inside. Quarantine with the steal, and he's fouled. And this will be a two shot foul because it'll be 10th, the double bonus. With 27 seconds to go. Foul on Meslowski, his first. Actually, they only have nine on there, so I thought they had nine before. So this will be just still a one on one. A big one on one for, for quarantine. Hits the firm in. Gabriel Quarantine, huge in this second half. Can make it a four point game. He does. All righty, Newton down by four. They go for a quick two or shoot a three. Petrugio swings it over, Bennett's for three. In and out. Loose ball, rebound. Troy Brennan with it. And he is fouled. Brennan will go to the line with 12 seconds to go. A chance to kind of wrap this up for Lenovee Valley. Again, high school basketball, clock does not stop like in college when the ball goes through in the final minute. So, say Newton shoots and scores and there's less than five seconds, Lenovee Valley does not have to inbound. Troy Brennan hits the free throw. Five point game. Looking to make it a two possession game, make it a six point. That's a lot of work in 12 seconds if you're Newton. It gets it to go. 54 48. Pressure defense. Again, if they score and it's less than five, let it be does and have to inbound. Bennett's off the back rim, no good. Four seconds to go. We'll have a foul, and J.J. Worthington will walk to the line, so congratulations to Lenape. They're gonna go on the road and get a season sweep of the Newton Braves. They'll move to nine and six, six and three in the division. Newton will fall to four and 11, two and seven in the division, but a great game here on the Morris Sussex Sports Network. Again, later on tonight, go to the Morris Sussex Sports social media. You'll see all the post-game reaction. I want to thank the crew here, our cameraman, our producer, the world-famous Vincenzo Sebastiano. Great job as usual on the board. And he'll hit one or two, 55-48. McCullough will take it, back rim, and a buzzer will sound. So congratulations to the Lenny Valley Patriots as they pick up a win, 55-48. And to boot, Troy Brennan gets his 1,000 points. So congratulations to the Patriots. That'll wrap up our live coverage here on the Morris Sun Sports Network. Have a great evening, everyone. I'm Dave Cleary. We'll see you again soon.
2000. Just become the third, joining Joe McDonald, graduating in 82, and Sean Benz, who graduated in 1998. Bennett's for three, and he's all net. New will probably hold for one, but Trugo inside. Bennett's dumps it to the corner. McCullough looking inside for Speck. Oh, great look to Trugo. Tough shot in the paint. He gets it to go with two seconds to go. If he's a Brennan, he's just worried about winning and losing. The numbers will come. Terrific team mentality by the Brennans as players and as coaches. Oh, he's all alone. He gets it. He's got four. So kind of neat to, for me tonight to have the possibility of calling Troy's 1,000 points. Good ball movement left alone for three, and a big three right there. 2-2-1, full court pressure defense by Lenovee Valley. McCullough swings it over, good anticipation there. Braden Coles, who's checked in number 24. Lewis B. Arias, Jackie Young, Kate Tarabaki had the big shot against Westwood to send overtime. They dump it inside, and Mazowski gets it to go. Back out to Cali. I see for Denzi with those glasses, it reminds me of Thomas Salmon. Hard-nosed kid on that 2017 Newton Club. Little runner in the lane, and it goes for Cali. And Lenny Valley starting to extend its lead. You know, the kid is just another chop off the old Brennan block there. He looks exactly like a Brennan. Yep, he, it, well, perfect cross between a Brennan and, and a Heller. Yep. Mom, mom and dad, two amazing athletes, so not surprised at all. Troy's ripping it up here. Kozlowski with the three. His dad was trying to dump it inside. Worlington kicks it out. They get it to Troy Brennan. A little baseline J, nice touch. He's, He's got a left now. And they've been pressing most of the most of the whole night, and uh, he can do it all. He can dribble, he can rebound, he can shoot, he can pass, play defense. And his game's lacrosse. Exactly. This isn't <laughs> even his number one. The big guy with another putback. He basketball, and in my opinion, one of the best softball players this county's ever seen. Been living in her shadow since birth. <laughs> Nothing's changed. A oh, great nice look. look. Great look. The old quarter right there to Bennett's. They need to get a stop and, a, and another basket right here, and just as I call for it. You got it. Nice look oh, again great by look McCullough. For McCullough inside to Meslowski. Very good third quarter. Troy Brennan puts it on the deck, swings it out. Worlington, baseline jumper. Yeah, get to go. Newton's going to try to continue this run. Outlet Meslowski to McCullough. He draws the foul. One. Great take by McCullough right McCullough on the inbounds, gets it in before the five count to Latruglio. Good ball movement, McCullough in the corner. He's hot Knocks now, down. he's hot now. Well, he was a special three-sport athlete. Football quarterback, basketball forward, terrific baseball player. There's a steal, and Maslowski will lay it in, and Newton ties it up. Off the screen, Callie swings it over to Sarnella. Inside, strong in the basket for quarantine. He's had a good. Levy Valley will retake the lead, 37-35. Just over five to go. Bennett's great look inside. Maslowski with the cut, and he finished. As they spread it out, got to watch that cutter go into the hoop. Long three, short. Speck with the rebound. Great job. Great give and block. Wow, quarantine sends it back. Maslowski with the Euro still can't get to go. Again, they've done a good job spreading the floor and creating the backdoor cut. Bennett's left alone. Look at the tie. He does. Jake Bennett with the three. Well, Brennan splits the double. Cali gives it up to Brennan. Back to Cali. Step back, takes the three, and he answers. Go. Worthington picks up the defense of the True Guild, playing with four. Mislowski. Back out. Bennis left alone. He'll take it again and knock it down. Newton takes the lead. Bennett's. Bennett's and Brennan going at it. This is Mislowski back over to Spec. He thought about it. We're tied. 43, 54 seconds. There's the backdoor cut, and it works. Bennett's with the basket. Now, 
two. They've had as high as a 10 point lead in this one. Worthington can't get the go. Brennan with the putback. We're tied at 45 here with seven seconds to go. McCullough gets it in. Specked with the one move. And it goes. Or he called a walk. The walk is called. Wow. Lenny Valley will get it. Work it down so you can get that open cut to the basket. Well, if someone's left alone, they can take a three. Speck thought about it. He will take it. And he knocks it down. Fabian Speck with a huge. Lenny Valley can take the lead if he knocks down both ends. He does. The big guys had a good second half. The inbound. So Troy Brennan hits the free throw. Five point game. Looking at make 4,000. Just become the third. Joining Joe McDonald, who graduated in 82, and Sean Benz, who graduated in 1998. Bennett's for three, and he's all net. New will probably hold for one. Latrugo inside. Bennett dumps it to the corner. McCullough looking inside for Speck. Oh, great look to Latrugo. Tough shot in the paint. He gets it to go with two seconds to go. If he's a Brennan, he's just worried about winning and losing. The numbers will come. Terrific team mentality by the Brennans as players and as coaches. Oh, he's all alone. He gets it. He's got four. Kind of neat this, for me tonight to have the possibility of calling Troy's thousand points. Good ball movement left alone for three and a big three right there. 